How's it going guys, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So if you saw my The Blair Witch Encounter animation, then you may have noticed that I did a little bit of a first person handy cam style thing there. And I thought I'd start off this tutorial with a little bit of a BTS, uh, aka behind the scenes of how I did that and then uh, move into how to do it yourself. So you can see here that this is the uh, opening scene when the character starts his camera up if you uh, Watch this little bit here. That's where he does a shaky cam and starts to move forward and whatnot. So what you can see here is I actually did the little camera in his hand. I just made a model with some cubes and stuff and uh, it just is nothing. It's just a little box there and it really didn't play much into the animation. I actually, you know, kind of was winging it. Wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do or how I was going to do it. And I just wanted to make it so that if a, if a shadow happened, then it would look like there's a character holding a camera. Anyway, uh, so basically what I did here is had this animation take place where I mostly animated just the camera. You can watch this here. I actually animated Steve a little bit in the beginning just in case because of his shadow that shows up in the opening shot. But once the camera pans up, it's pretty much just the camera there. Ignore the other camera, that's for another sequence. Anyway, so as you can see, like Steve basically is just uh, sliding around. I didn't animate him at all. I animated his position, that's about it, his rotation and whatnot. But most of the animation here is taking place with the camera. Uh, another thing of note, if I back up here... The camera has no light on it at this point, but once we get to the position where I knew I wanted the night vision effect to come on, which was done in editing, it wasn't done in Minimator, uh, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a tutorial on that. Because if I can select the right character here, good god, this is a very bad behind the scenes. Anyway, uh, so at this point, I had a little bit of unwanted camera shake the way it played out. If I bring this back up, uh, you can watch it here. And you can see this really like kind of a, a wonky move there. So I actually decided this is probably a good point to have the night vision kick on. So what I did is I had the light pop on right about there. And that was my indication in the video editor that that's where I wanted to get the night vision effect started. So that's a little thing that I did there. And uh, at that point, I also had the night effect apply with the background as you can see here I had these keyframes for the background and it transitions quickly to nighttime outside and that makes the inside of our uh, cave even darker and made the night vision effect apply more effectively. So what you have here is basically just Steve sliding around and all of the walking, all the animation that you see is taking place solely with the camera. If you watched my camera shake tutorial a couple of weeks ago, then uh, you should know some idea of how I did that. And uh, yeah, so it basically just comes up here and we're going to skip towards the end, which is where something else occurs when our Steve, unfortunately and tragically plummets to the ground below after the evil scary witch scares him off. So uh, what's interesting here is because of the way I did this, I actually had the camera parented to his hand because I wanted it to appear as though it was someone holding a camera. Um, I had to get another camera and animate it instead of the one on his hand because... When I animated his arm, it completely threw off the camera. So as you can see here, I have camera B and camera A is the one that was parented to Steve, which is no longer visible. As you can see here, I had to go invisible right here. And then from there, camera B took over and camera B is actually the one that has the, the fall animation and tilts on its side and all that stuff. So you can see it just one disappears, the other one appears and I animated it to bounce around and have that effect. So there you go. That's a little behind the scenes on that and a little uh, insight into how I accomplished it. And we'll just go now into the basics of how you would do the camera shake animation. All right, guys. So we're in our blank project. We're going to go ahead and bring in... Why is that selected? Where where are we? We're going to go ahead and bring in a human. There we go. If I can get, the, get things going. All right. So here we go. We got Steve and he's all cool and stuff. So I'm going to actually go with a first person camera perspective for this tutorial. If you guys want to do the handy cam thing like I did, it would basically be the same process that I did here. It's just you would parent it to his hand instead of his head. 
and there's my taskbar as usual. And uh, so what we're gonna do is just take the camera, parent it to the body or the head. It really depends on how you're gonna do it. Generally speaking, I would think you would probably not want the head visible. So you can actually just take it off but if you want the shadow there, in case you have shadows in your animation, obviously you would want to keep that. But you can always just untick in the uh, visibility option there and it'll make the head go away. But uh, for our purposes, we're going to have it like this. And uh, I'll actually probably just go ahead and parent the camera to the head itself, like so. So no, whatever we do with the head would actually apply to the camera as well. So one thing you'll notice here is that when you do that, the camera isn't parented at eye level, what I would generally do is just raise it up. It probably doesn't really matter that much, but uh, that's what I would recommend. Something about probably four pixels or points should about do it. All right, so now that we've got that in place, what you're probably gonna wanna do is open up your field of view a bit. I think I found around 50 or 55 is pretty good for a, uh, you know, the, uh, the look of, uh, you know, having your, uh, head, your eyes, or whatever. Uh, so what you can see there is when we look directly down though, we see the body. So what you're gonna wanna do is bring this out probably about two points, maybe a little bit further. It really depends on what you want things to look like. So what we can do is just go ahead and aim this down and uh, bring it out something like that. As you can see, you start to see the head right there. So you can bring it in just a tad and then just make sure you don't look all the way down then uh, maybe about 3 point, uh, 3.5 3.8 3 3.9 whatever is in there just so you don't see the head when you look around you don't want that, that texture popping in uh, anyway so that way anytime you're animating you're not gonna have to move the camera anymore you can just affect the rotation and uh, you can do any perspective as you want looking up and down or down at your feet and stuff and uh, that should hopefully get the look that you want. You can probably bring this down, I think probably about 3.5 would even that out exactly with the eyes as you can see there. So anyway, that's up to you. It's a lot of detail, sorry, but it is what it is. All right, so uh, again, if you saw my camera shake tutorial, then you're probably aware of uh, how to do camera shake. And technically this is about the same process. You basically just want to take the camera and you just uh, you know move it down to one side, then back up to the other side. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can bring this up a bit, make it a little bit easier to see. And uh, yeah, you just keep up with how things are moving and you just keep things like that. And you can see there, it kind of has a not so great look, but in general, when I was doing the Blair Witch Encounter, I used the uh, transition here, this ease in and out sign. I'm pretty sure that's the one I used. It was either that one or the quadratic ease in and out. And uh, depending on the move you have, obviously these are really exaggerated moves. I, I would I would go a little bit more subtle with these uh, instead. And uh, they generally, uh, I found that that gave me a pretty good effect. And the timing of it is also going to be a factor, of course. You don't want to go too far... Uh, too far inwards, like where things are moving extremely fast, such as this. Unless you want it to, but for general, like walking and whatnot, you're going to want to kind of have it spaced out a bit. I generally used about 5 to 10 frames apart, I believe, when I did the uh, Blair Witch animation. So let's go ahead and just move these apart about 10 frames each and see what that gives us. All right, I just went ahead and played with this a little bit to get a little bit more pleasing effect here. Still not that great, but uh, we have this look that we're after. And another thing that I would do is actually alter the tilt of the camera. And uh, you can do that one of two ways or both ways. You can go over here and just adjust the rotation like so. Left and right, left and right. Uh, or you can actually do it on the keyframe when you hold right click in your camera view and you hold the Z key or the C key then uh, you can have it tilt that way and if you hold shift while you do that it'll do it a little bit slower in smaller increments so you don't have this 
willy-nilly craziness going on. So uh, basically when I would do that, as you can see here, I did this one to negative one. So then this next one, I might go to positive one and uh, any other variances in between, maybe zero, negative 0 0.5. And then over here, maybe we'll go to 1.2, something like that. So then what you end up with is this kind of uh, more handheld shaky kind of look. This is of course because I was going for a handheld camera perspective. If you're going to do an actual like this one, a uh, first person perspective, you may not want as much tilt. It really depends on how you're animating it and what you're going to go for. But that's pretty much it. That's the basics of uh, you know what I would what I did and how I accomplished it. Of course, you definitely want to play with these transitions unless you decide to edit linearly to try and get the uh, the look and the effect that you want. Generally, I find that the ease in and out sign gives me uh, a lot better results than the quadratic uh, in, a, in a lot of instances, not just this one. So uh, I recommend you guys play with those. And if you're not sure how transitions work, I did a tutorial on that as well. So feel free to check that out. Uh, but that's pretty much it. That's the basics of, you know, how you would accomplish it. The, the main thing, like I said, in the camera shake tutorial is uh, just kind of have the camera move from one pose to the next in a relatively uh, meaningful way. Like uh, make sure it makes sense how far it's going and the timing in between uh, and whatnot. And as you can see here, as an example, when you watch this, it's not really the best camera shake, but the fact that it ends here on this keyframe makes it appear extra wonky. Uh, it looks a lot better when there's a movement afterwards. So just keep that in mind if you begin to feel disheartened, like it's not turning out the way you want it to. Uh, sometimes that can just be the look when there's no other movement afterwards. So that's pretty much it. That's the basics of uh, how you would do a first person camera view. Uh, the main thing I would suggest is, you know, just keep in mind what your character is doing in the scene. So like for the here, he's walking. And as you can see, like everything that I do, every movement that I add generally adds to the effect uh, with it just standing there uh, being static. Let's uh, go ahead and change this to instant real quick. When it's just static, you can see here that uh, the camera just kind of shakes and it doesn't look that bad. I would probably try to clean this up and make it look a little bit better, but it's, uh, it's, it's not doing anything. So when I add this, when the character actually moves, it kind of gives purpose to that movement and makes it even more realistic and kind of gives it some more weight and feel. So, you know, the, there's not a whole lot to say here about this effect, especially, like I said, if you watch my camera shake tutorial, but uh, all of these things, like these tips of how to get the, the whole effect is when your character's moving, you definitely want to get all these elements in place before you judge your movement, because otherwise, you know, it may not look that good one way, but then you add the extra little detail. So I would just, as a little tip, I would be mindful of not spending too much time on one aspect if you haven't animated other aspects of the animation, because the you know just like this one, the movement of the character adds to the movement of the camera. So uh, you may have one and not the other, and it doesn't look like it's right, and you think you haven't gotten the effect. But uh, once you put everything together, it may be what you're trying to go for and what you're looking for. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, if you want an addendum to this tutorial, feel free to let me know in the comments. Also, a little note, I'm not sure if I'll have a video up about this before this tutorial goes up. So I'm just going to go ahead and mention it here. And I may mention it in future tutorials from now. Uh, if any of you guys are able to, if any of you wish to help support me and the channel more directly, I have set up a Patreon page and I have a couple of uh, interesting little rewards on there. I've, I've had it for a while now, but I didn't actually do anything with it because I wasn't sure what to offer or how to do it. And I don't really know if anyone's willing or able to contribute or anything. So, you know, I kind of just put it on the back burner. But now I have it up and I'm pretty satisfied with what it is. And there will be a link in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself and see some of the stuff that I'm talking about and what's going on with that. As always, just liking, commenting, subscribing, all those things really help me out. But if you want to contribute more directly and help me to do this more and make better videos and things like that, then uh, any help is appreciated. But of course, it is not required or anything like that. So feel free to check that out, guys, if you're interested. 
otherwise that's gonna be it for me so thanks for watching i hope this tutorial was helpful sorry for some of the wonkiness but hopefully uh it inspired you at least and uh that's it thanks for joining me hope you enjoyed the video feel free to hit that like button comment and subscribe to become a citizen today and i will see you in the next video